Hello guys, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on engineering science N1. Uh, in this platform, we are going to be focusing on dynamics, uh, where we are given a uh, question five from uh, the question paper of February 2022. So we are going to quickly rush through the questions that we are given uh, on this question. Uh, we are given on 5.1 that a construction worker pushes a wheelbarrow full of sand on a work site. He moves in a northwestern direction. So take northwest. Uh, for 45 meters, he then turns west and moves another 50 meters to dump the load. Determine graphically the resultant of the movement the worker has undergone. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. You have to, uh, you must draw this according to the scale that you are given. Take note, uh, we are given that 10 meters is represented by one centimeter. So we are going to have something of this nature. I'm just going to show you a sketch so that you're going to do this uh, uh, accurately. Okay, so I want you to do this question accurately, but as for me, I'm just going to show you uh, just a sketch here. All right, so let's say uh, we have got our point here, remember, this guy that we are given, okay, let's start with the scale. We are given 10 meters as to one centimeter. Okay, so whatever that you're going to take can be taken from a North Pole. So we can just indicate a North Pole in this case. So you draw, remember, a North Pole, it's uh, 90 degrees. So we are going to have, uh, let's just say 90 here. All right, so you just want... Okay, something of this nature, okay? So I have my North Pole, the way I'm going to indicate uh, the given what? The given uh, uh, speed, Red speed, let's check the question. Yeah, that's okay, this is distance, okay. So we are given that he moves in a northwestern direction for 45 meters, okay? So northwest, this is between the north and the west. This is your north here. This is your west, your east, and your south. So from the north going to the west. So in between, if it is northwest, it means there is an angle of 45 degrees in between. So you measure 45 degrees from the north, all right? From the north here going to the west or from the west to the north in between, you measure 45 degrees. So if you measure 45 degrees, that's something of this nature. Uh, we are going to have uh, something of this nature here. All right. So let's say this is our 45 degrees in between. All right. This line is supposed to be the distance that was traveled by this, uh, by the wheelbarrow, which is this part here. All right. So like I said, in between here, we have got what? 45 degrees. So that means between also here, we are remaining with 45 degrees, okay? So we are given that this is 45 meters. So 45 meters is supposed to be converted to centimeters. Remember 10 meters, it's one centimeter. So if you are to divide this 45 by 10, we are going to obtain 4,5. So according to centimeters, this is going to be 4,5 centimeters, but in terms of the distance that you are representing, this is 45 meters. But what you measure on your ruler, you measure 4,5. So that means this is now, we are now at this point, okay? We are now at this point. This is in our north point, so we are now at this point here. All right, let's uh, see what is going to happen from this point. From this point, we are now given that he is going to take this, uh, he then turns west and moves another 50 meters, okay, to dump the Lord said. Okay, so he is now going to the west for 50 meters. So to the west, that means we are referring to the straight line from this point. We are supposed to move straight and we divide again by 10 meters, which means we have to move five centimeters. So you measure five centimeters straight. So how are we going to move straight to this point here? Okay, this is the idea that we have. Remember, this is supposed to be your North Pole like this. All right. So you know that if this angle is 45, this angle here is supposed to be 
45 degrees so that this is going to be a straight line remember from the concept of what offset angles all right so that is what you're going to do from this point that you have you measure 45 degrees from this point all right you measure 45 degrees so when you have measured 45 degrees you are going to obtain a horizontal line that you're going to have from that 45 degrees you draw this line all right from this point all right i want this point from this point all right like this you measure 45 degrees so what i'm trying to say is that if this angle here is 45 degrees it means this is also for these two are parallel lines because from your z angles remember from your alternate angles sorry from our z angles like this these two angles are equal so here we are having 45, here we are having 45. That's how you draw the straight line. You don't just draw a straight line, okay? So this is the part that is important uh, from this point here. So we are now, uh, okay, just a little bit here, just a little bit. I want to remove this part here. All right. So uh, remember, this is 45 meters. And this one from this point is direct in the west. We have got 50 meters, which we say is going to be 5 centimeters if you divide by 10. So this is 5 centimeters, but directly the distance is what? It's 50 meters, okay? So this is where you are now, which is your end point here. So what you're going to do, the question is, let's check the question. The question is determine the resultant graphical. So the resultant is from the starting point to the end point. So you join these two points from where you started up to the ending point. So this is going to be our resultant, all right? So if you join these two points, we are going to have this as our resultant, all right? So that's somewhere here. Let me just a little bit. All right, that's at this point like this. So this is going to be our resultant, all right? So what you do is that you measure the length of the line, this length, using your ruler. Remember, so one centimeter represents 10 meters, okay? So if you measure this distance properly from your ruler, you are going to obtain 8,8 .8 centimeters, okay? So to convert to meters, you multiply by 10. So this is going to be uh, 88 meters. So this is our resultant which is 88 meters. Then the direction now, uh, it depends, taking it in from the north. We, if we take from the north here, we are going to move from the north in the westly direction. This is from north to the west. So if you measure properly, you're going to discover that this angle inside the triangle, if you measure using your protractor, this angle is going to give you 24 degrees, okay? So that means our resultant is a combination of this 45 degrees and the 24 degrees. So you add it together. So 45 plus 24, which is going to be 69 degrees, okay? So our resultant is going to be 88 meters, then from the north to the west, which is 69 degrees to the west. All right, so that can be our resultant, or we can take it from the west, uh, here from this point, from the west line to the north this way, if you measure this angle, you are going to obtain this as 21 degrees. So it can be west 21 degrees to the, to the north. All right, so that's another presentation that you could have uh, taken there. So that was question 5.1. 5.2, we are now given an aircraft takes one hour and 30 minutes to fly from uh, Uppington, to Jobek, okay, uh, is that Uppington? I don't know. Okay, the distance between Uppington and Jobek is 720 kilometers. Draw a neat labeled distance time, take note distance time graph, or well, that is displacement time graph for the flight. We are given one hour represents 10 centimeters. So this, we are supposed to use our time in hours, okay? Then our distance in kilometers, because here we are given 50 kilometers represents one centimeter. Okay, so I'm going to show you a sketch of how you're supposed to have this. So take note, this is distance 
for displacement time graph. So we need our ruler also, just like the previous part. All right, so let's save our ruler here. All right, so we are going to have the horizontal axis representing uh, time. So this is 5.21. So this is going to be our time axis, all right? Then we move on to the displacement axis. So this is the axis for displacement. All right, so that is what you're going to have uh, in this case. All right, so from this part, guys, uh, let us move together. We are given in this case that the total time is one hour, 30 minutes, all right? So our time is one hour, 30 minutes. In this case, uh, that's our time. It's one hour, 30 minutes, okay? One hour, 30 minutes. Then the displacement is 720. That is in between, we have got a displacement of 720. So displacement is 720 kilometers. So we are given that in terms of time, use a scale of one hour represented by what? By 10 centimeters, okay? So if it is like this, guys, okay, if we've got uh, 10 centimeters, let's say you've taken measurements on your graph there, and this is where we have our 10 centimeters. Let's just say we have got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you just do this according to your scale, okay? Let's say this is where we have our 10 centimeters, okay? I don't know if this any point that you're going to have or we can have this way. Okay, let's just try to space a little bit. Okay, just a little bit here. So let's say our 10 centimeters is at this point. Okay, so let me indicate that this is time so that we do not confuse. So like I said, we are going to use time in hours. Okay, so let's say our 10 centimeters is at this point. That's where we have one hour after that 10 centimeters. So it means that uh, we can take in between before, okay? That is in between the, the zero and what? And 10 centimeters in between. This is 10 centimeters. So in between at five centimeters, that is in between. That means we are at half of an hour and half of an hour is 0 0.5. That is half times one, that's 0 0.5. So it means every five centimeters, it's 0 0.5. Five centimeters, another 0, 0,5. So if we add another five centimeters, it is going to be one plus 0, 0,5, which is 1,5, and so on and so on. So one and a half, that is one hour, 30 minutes. That is 1,5 hours. So that is what we have there. Then on the displacement here, we've got our displacement. So this is displacement, which we said we are going to take in kilometers. We are given that, each and every centimeter that we have, it, it represents 50 kilometers. And we need 720 kilometers, okay? So every centimeter is 50, all right? So which means we are going to work with every centimeter, 50 up to seven, up to 700 and what? Up to 720. So we can say, this is a centimeter. We have got 50, a centimeter, this is 100 a centimeter, 150, a centimeter, 200, a centimeter, 250, and so on, and so on, and so on, up to the last one, which is at what? At 720. So this is uh, 300, uh, 350, uh, 400, uh, 450, uh, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, uh, then we can uh, at least end at 750. Okay, because remember, we need 720. So let's say our 720 is approximately maybe at this point. This is where we have our 720 kilometers. This is the one that has to correspond with 1,5. So the, 750, the 720 corresponds here direct with 1,5. So where we reach 1,5, these two, where they meet, you join these points. Okay, so this one, it corresponds with 1,5. So to indicate this, we can join this point from zero 
up to where these points intersect at that point. All right, so that is what we can have now like this. So that is the steepness of the slope, which is the gradient. So this gradient or the steepness of the slope, it represents the velocity, okay? So that is what we have here as the steepness of the slope. So that's what we had. So the question is, what does the gradient of the graph represent? They are actually asking what I'm saying, what I'm, I, uh, I just said right now. So I said the gradient, that's the velocity, okay? So this is the velocity measured in what meters per second. All right, then the question is calculate the gradient of the graph. Now they are asking you to calculate the gradient, which is the velocity. Okay, so take note, guys, this was in kilometers. Our time was in what? In hours. So it is going to be in kilometers per hour. If, this, uh, if the displacement is in meters and the time is in seconds, then it is going to be meters per second. But this time it's kilometers per, per hour. So the question is to calculate the gradient where we say the gradient is the velocity. So in this case, on 5.23, our gradient is equivalent to the velocity. So if it is equivalent to the velocity, that means it is the change in displacement over the change in time, change in displacement over the change in time, whereby you can just take any corresponding point and the best point to use that is so, so vivid is this one of 720, which corresponds with 1,5. So that means when we've got a displacement of 720 kilometers, our time is 1,5 hours. So that is 720. Uh, we are going to have this as 720 kilometers over time of 1,5 in hours. So if you divide these two, you are going to obtain your gradient, which is the velocity that is 480 kilometers per, per hour. So take note of the units. Be very, very careful if you are dealing with the units there, all right? So that was the question on the uh, gradient of the graph, which represents the velocity. So that is what we had, guys, from question number five on dynamics uh, from the question paper of February 2022 from Maison African Motives till we meet again.